it. Okay, so the other thing I want to I want to bring up real quick is uh, Marina set up a Facebook for uh, the whole group. If you haven't joined the Facebook Facebook group with Marina, that might be something you want to do. Marina, can you put up that link again? It's a closed room. It's only for us and our students. So uh, make sure that uh, you know uh, you don't share that link. Uh, thanks, Marina. Share the link. It's only for it's only for this group. Okay. So while Marina does that, uh, does anybody? There it is. There's the Facebook group. So please, if you want to join that group, let Marina know. Uh, that you're doing that now, so she knows to let you to enter that group because it's a closed group. Okay, does anybody need to enter that group? <laughs> so, anybody that hasn't entered, you might want to enter it. So, just let, okay, so, okay, good. So, Marina there, Jackie wants to enter. Good, good. Ryan, good. Amir, good. Um, you know, WhatsApp is good. If you want to do it as a group, you can. I'm trying to get everybody kind of in the same place to ensure that we get maximum uh, leveraging each other's uh, deals and, and contacts and stuff like that. It's a great place to uh, interact if we're all interacting together. Um, we really set it up originally for investing if somebody because we, we wanted to set up a place where people with 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 the money or access to capital could finance deals but we decided to open it up to everybody so it's really a place to you know if you, if you see if you have an opportunity and you believe there's uh, you know opportunity for an investor to put up the capital to, or to partner with the deal you can use that that location to do it we were we were talking about it on our call but because this is recorded and posted i really didn't want to put too much information being revealed via emails so um that's why we did it okay let's start with with questions who has any questions that they want to ask and if you have a deal that you want me to review you can you can uh, send it to me and i can pop it up for the group to look at Does anybody have a deal they want reviewed? Yeah, okay. <laughs> keep hustling, keep hustling. Okay. So, I do have a, a couple things. Um, one of them is from uh, Sierra. She was working on, she is working on a a, uh, a uh, lease option, rent to own, with an investor. Uh, she's trying to put something together, and we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna pop that up. Uh, if that's all right with you, Sierra, is that okay? Okay, good. We'll pop it up, and we'll talk about what we saw there, and it was a good example of the numbers and. And what that looks like. Okay, anybody else have anything? If you do, send it to me. No questions, everybody's good. Yeah, Jackie, the the one you sent me looked like the sheet itself was some numbers were they were entered in as zero. Um can you, can you, did you, did you put the numbers, did you get updated numbers or clearer numbers for the sheet? No. Okay. That's tough. We need, we need the information to ensure that we can evaluate a deal. It's tough without the numbers uh, actually in there to, to evaluate it. Um, 
do you think that's going to be something that you can get soon? Okay, Jackie, why don't you just resend it to me again? I'll bring it up anyways. Just resend the sheet that you got with the, the, the sheet that you sent me, and I'll bring it up again. Okay. Yeah, just do it. You can send it to me now, and I'll bring it up. I just put it away to uh, wait for the additional information. We can look at that and talk about what, what's needed. So Wayne, I, you know what, um, Realtor.ca, MLS, multiple listing site, basically those are retail sites as well as I, I, ICX, which is uh, commercial, all those, all those sites are in a retail state, which is fine, it's just, you know, as a retail, in retail it's, it's a little bit different. Now ICX, I mean the commercial stuff is a little bit different. Uh, it's, you know, you can still find opportunity there, but for MLS, uh, you know, Realtor.ca, you know, these are retail estate properties. Uh, there's maybe an advantage of maybe looking at properties in that area to see what kind of the range is, but for deals, unfortunately, that you're not going to find a lot there. doesn't mean you can't, uh, but, but, you know, it's something, you know, if I was looking, you know, if I was, I was spending energy on MLS or Realtor.ca, I would look at triplexes, fourplexes, fiveplexes as a, as an opportunity, um, and I would I would focus in you know um, out east, middle provinces. You can still find opportunities there, but you have to go multiple units uh, to make that work. Typically, not always, but you know. Yeah, it's pretty much like that, and, and you know, it's it's and it's really I want everyone to recognize, right, that that really the good deals are created, right? Uh, we see an opportunity because there's a problem. It's a problem we can fix. I believe we can fix, and we structure a deal that makes it work. That's really what we're looking looking to do. Okay, um, that's that's really the skill that you're learning. You know, to, to, to take a good deal or something that's discounted heavily uh, and in a retail state is unlikely to find. And if you find it, really, there's no skill needed. Uh, the market typically doesn't give us those opportunities. Um, so we need to we need to be able to create create those deals to allow us to be able to, you know, to capitalize on them. Okay. Okay. So uh, why don't we do this? Uh, Okay. So I'm going to bring up my screen. I'm going to bring up uh, uh, Sierra's deal. Sierra, so I'm just going to rip out the, the location. Let's put that over there. Let's see. Okay, so let's do this. All right, so let's share the screen and look at this deal. Okay, can everybody see that? Dear, are you okay with this? I mean, this is not bad to have here. It's going to be posted. I mean, just your your uh, website and, and uh, email. Okay, good. All right. So let me see if I can make. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. 
There we go. All right, so uh, is that big enough? Yeah, no worries. Okay, so we have a rent to own. Uh, term is four years. Uh, me and Sierra talked about this. The reason it's four years is it's going to take the person four years to qualify based on uh, the interaction with her mortgage broker. Uh, total profit from the deal is $71,044.50. Return on investment per year is 24.25%. Total uh, option consideration is 72000 Total option consideration percentage, 20, 20%. Now, when we come down here and we look, that offer was 326 142 for the price. Okay. 75%, 244 606 50 that would be secured by the bank or institution. The investment uh, down payment looking for the the other twenty, which is eighty one thousand five hundred thirty five. Fuel fees two thousand. Appraisal five hundred. Um, inspection. I was say uh, the appraisal. Did you already pay for the appraisal? I'm curious. Sierra, are you ready to pay for the appraisal? So most institutions, you know, if they're doing a residential mortgage, will will do the appraisal themselves. It's not a bad thing to do it. It's a cost of doing business. It's a write-off against uh, expenses, income. So it's it's something that uh, it's okay to do. But you know, when you can get it for nothing or if it works out that way you you do that inspection uh you will do i guess right sierra you're doing an inspection okay you pay for that that's good and it's important for the tenant buyer to inspect the property because ultimately we're asking the tenant buyer to pay for all the expenses right if anything goes wrong on that property uh, in the way of maintenance, my apologies. We're asking them to pay for maintenance. They need to okay that, and the inspection does that for them. So um, it depends on the deal. You could you could put limits on the expenses. You could say it's five hundred. You could say it's a thousand. Is the limit of the expenses they're responsible for? Uh, when possible, obviously, we want the expenses to be taken on by the owner, which it should because they're the tenant buyer and they're the ones. Uh, responsible for the property and the intention obviously is to own it yeah exactly exactly right we're acting like the bank and they are the homeowners yep exactly miscellaneous uh, sale fee if there was one if someone referred this to us um, option consideration 10,800 so 10,800 is what the individual uh, Sierra is trying to agree with is the 10,800 to to give that as a Non-refundable option consideration, initial uh, option consideration, uh, and is is that been secured, Sierra? Are you still working on that? Okay. How much did he say, Sierra, that he wanted to give you? I remember it was less than that. Five k. So the challenge with with you know, taking less than three um, percent, and five k is, is is much less than that. Um, is is even the ten eight doesn't quite get us three uh, percent? It gets us what? Let's see, three nine. Oh yeah, it does. Nine ten. That's exactly three percent. So the ten eight is exactly three percent. Five k would be half of that. So we're looking at less than one and a half percent. We want to. Uh, recognize that uh, you know that's a security, right? That 5K is is to is to cover uh, if the if the person leaves early, uh, or in this case that we're looking at, at between five and ten eight, uh, but that allows us to cover expenses if the individual leaves early, and that's our basically security deposit. 
Uh, but it's non-refundable, and obviously our intention is to give it back to them at the end of the deal if they move forward with the sale. Okay, so sale price is 360. Uh, you can see that the estimation is done at two and a half percent. Let me just check something here. That's not active. Okay. Uh, okay, so we have uh, first mortgage, three and a half percent, amortized over 25 years. That's uh, 218,000. Less balance of uh, mortgage, second mortgage. Interest is 10% interest only. And that that loan, or the loan is what the investor will be receiving for that loan, correct, Sierra? Or is it, in this case, we're not giving them anything, we're just splitting the profits, right? Legal costs at closing and the initial investment is 73,235. Not planning to have a second mortgage. So the so the oh I see you're you're not you're not you're not counting the investor as a second mortgage. They're a partner, correct? Okay, so. In this case, we're choosing to split the profits with the individual versus giving them a yield on the second mortgage as a second mortgage at 10%. Uh, and uh, partnership, the individual does become a partner with you. Typically, they're going to make more money than if you pay them interest. It really depends on the relationship that you create in the deal with that partner or investor. Okay? All right. So let's go down here. Uh, initial uh, options theory. So mortgage penalty. This is a good one. So are you doing? Uh, are you doing a variable rate mortgage? Are you doing a five-year fixed? Rate? So what What are you hoping to do on that mortgage? Because if it's a five-year mortgage and we break the term, there's going to be penalties. Okay, so my mortgage broker can make the term the same as the rent-to-own term, so no penalty. Good. Sierra, ask your ask your mortgage broker if if you could do a five-year term or even the four-year term, and ask them if uh, we can make the mortgage assumable, so that the 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 individual buying the property can assume the mortgage, and that way, um, if they buy early, uh, you won't break the mortgage. Can you check that, Sierra? Any questions about that, anybody? So mortgages can be assumable or portable. Porting, though, is you porting from one house to another. It's, it's you, you know, being the owner of one property and porting it to another property that you're going to own. Assumable means that the buyer, uh, a new owner, can assume the mortgage. It still have to qualify and, and go through the, the hoops. Uh, to qualify to get to get the mortgage, but the assumable mortgage avoids any penalties uh, by breaking the term of the mortgage. Okay, does anybody have any questions about that? Everybody understand that? You have to double check, obviously, make sure that the mortgage itself is is in that state, right? That the, the mortgage broker is preparing that type of deal for you. Okay, less initial consideration, which is the 10 8. If we get the 10 8, in this case, we're somewhere between 5 and 10 8. Uh, less option consideration per month, 48 months. Now the person, so what Sierra has done and uh, has done is basically said, look, if you can't, you know, for you to be able to have enough money at the end of the term, you're going to have to put more than, uh, you know, a few hundred dollars a month for uh, a monthly non-refundable option consideration that we can give you at the end to ensure that you have enough money to buy the property. So this individual is going to need you know, minimum five percent uh, uh, for the new price of the property, and he's and and any additional costs. Now you see here that the total profit from sale and transfer says negative five thousand four hundred sixty-seven fifty. Now it looks like there's a loss at the end of the deal. Okay, me and Sierra, Sierra worked on this and looked at it and and, and now understand. Um, 
Yeah, so there, so if we look down here, the, well, it's not listed here, but they're going to pay an extra $1,275. Now, where you see that, so the, the lease payment, so the, the lease, right, the rent, average rent is $1,800. And what they've done is they said, look, give us $3,075, um, you know, total. And, and the difference between $1,800 and this is $1,275. And this is what the seller, the buyer wants to do, the tenant buyer, right? So he, he's agreed to that, right? Yeah, so he knows he wants he wants to do that, okay? Now, when we look at that lease payment of $1,800 and the extra, you know, $1,275, um, that's what we're going to bring in total at the over this 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 term, okay? So first mortgage uh, loan interest is uh, twelve hundred and twenty-one dollars. That's going to be fifty-eight thousand for the four-year term. Second mortgage is done. Less property tax, which we're responsible for in this case, one hundred sixty dollars, and we got insurance one hundred dollars. Okay. So these are the co total costs after uh, after the actual uh, four-year term. Okay. Uh, joint venture management. There's no fee there. Condo fees. It's not a condo. It's a house. There's no strata fees. And we look here in the total profit uh, from cash flow. Uh, its total is going to be seventy-six thousand five hundred and twelve. Now, when we look here, you see that like that total profit. And that's because it's minus this five thousand four hundred and sixty-seven. Okay. So it looked like at the end of the deal. At the end of this deal, um, there will be a loss of $5,467.50, okay? So what I'm going to ask the group is, based on what you're seeing there, can anybody see why it's showing a loss? Sierra, you can't answer, obviously, because you know we talked about this. <laughs> so who can tell me why there's a loss at the end of the deal? Don't understand it, okay. You don't understand why there's a loss? So, and then, yes, and the numbers there. Uh, the down payment we are given back is more than the equity built. The down payment, do you mean the 10.8 is more than the equity built? Is that what you mean, Timothy? So everybody, everybody, everybody pull up their calculators and math, okay? Do the math. If you take, if you take a property, so that's the purchase price. That's the price that the seller will be buying it. Uh, the sorry, the initial price, right, uh, Sierra? That's the original. See, that's the price we're starting with, right? Three sixty. Or is that the end price? Because it looks like three sixty is the end price. That is what the end price will be. Now this is what I want to ask you, Sierra. Purchase price is three twenty six one forty two. What is the retail price on this property? You haven't settled on that. Okay, so okay, so um, let me check something. Okay, so a couple things I'll say uh, initially, okay, and we'll, we'll get to why the number shows what it shows, okay? 
So, PB just can't buy above that price. So, the 360 is what the, and this is very, very smart and wise to do this. Uh, Sierra has made sure the person can get, what's the maximum they can get approved uh, for the house in four years, correct Sierra? You've calculated based on what this person can be approved in four years, not now, in four years. This is very important. So she knows, they know, that the person's going to get approved based on their, you know, conversations and the vetting of their mortgage broker, that the person will get approved for 360000 That's the max. That's what they're, they're banking on, right? So they can't go higher than three sixty. They can't go higher than three sixty. So this here, right? You know, if we if we use a retail number, if we go lower, that's gonna be better for us, obviously. If we go twenty thousand, oops. Right, that's gonna be better for us for profit. Um, instead of three twenty six in this case, right? So uh, the 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 dilemma is this, right? Well, not dilemma, but 360 is the max this guy can qualify for. He can't really get, he can't really go, you know, higher than 360, obviously. You can't say, well, I'm going to get it for this, and I'm going to give him, you know, yeah, you know, uh, appreciation rate of 2.5, 3, 5, 6, 7 uh, in a neighborhood because 360 is the max this individual can pay. So you got to work backwards. 360 is the max they can pay. You know what can I get for a house in the area that he wants to make that work, right? That's that's what we're facing here. In this case, right now we're sitting at 326. If we look at uh, 326, two and a half per year. Can anybody tell me what that is? Somebody calculate 326, 142, two and a half percent each year for four years. What's the amount? Yeah, I know, Sierra. <laughs> I wanted them to do it. That's okay. <laughs> All right. So it's because someone had said that the the price itself cannot, you know, the the the, the ten five is not enough. Or or maybe they were referring to the you know. Uh, the 5,000 okay so does everybody see that does anybody ever actually calculate it has anybody calculated it two and a half percent times four years yep Should come out close to sixty, you know, five hundred sixty thousand. Now, if if three twenty six one four two was what we got it for, minus the you know uh, minus three hundred sixty thousand. You know, the original the original non refundable was even you know let's get to ten eight. The the original non refundable was ten eight. The difference between these property this property and the end sale price is how much? Who can tell me? So the original property. So all you got to do is take three hundred sixty thousand minus. There you go. Minus the purchase price. So thirty three eight five eight three hundred thirty three thousand eight hundred fifty eight dollars. That amount is the difference between our purchase and our sale at the end of it. So that's that's not what's causing the negative, right? Because we got to give them back ten ten eight. So if we give them back ten eight, we're still you know we're still up. You know, uh, twenty-three thousand fifty-eight dollars. So that's not causing that negative. That's not causing this negative. Okay. What's causing this negative? Okay. Let me add. Let me add a little bit more to this. Okay. So. 
let's let's do this. Sierra, what are we doing with the extra twelve hundred and uh, twelve hundred and seventy five dollars? So everybody understand the rent is eighteen hundred. We're collecting three thousand seventy five. The difference between these two is twelve seventy five. That's that's extra money given to uh, to to Sierra Wilbur for for the non-refundable option consideration. So that's going to be stashed away for the end. We're going to give that back to them. We're going to give that back to them at the end of the term. Okay. We're going to give all that money back to them at the end of the term, so they can so they can um, so they can. Uh, you know, for to buy. There it is, right there. Lease option consideration, twelve seventy five, forty eight months. We're giving them back sixty one thousand two hundred, right? Because we want them to be able to to get the property, and they're going to need, you know, five percent to get that property at least. You know, and the the price is three sixty. Um, they're going to need enough money to cover the down payment and any any costs of it. Now, actually, in this case, Sierra, let me know that person needs 20% down to buy this house, correct, Sierra? So even though this person four years later will qualify, they'll qualify with 20%, they still have 20% down. So that's why this huge amount is needed at the end. Otherwise, the person would only need maybe $20,000, right? To cover the 5% the, the down payment and any expenses in the transfer of the property. All right, so roughly twenty thousand. In this case, here I had to do something creative because this gentleman needs, you know, this family needs twenty percent down. He's trying to work it out so he has the money to be able to, to purchase this. Now three sixty to seventy two thousand is what they're going to need. So here plus this, you know, the option consideration of ten eight plus sixty one two. That's that's the twenty percent down. You can only put five percent down if he buys a max property of two ninety. But with twenty percent down, he could get up to three sixty. Does everybody understand that? So the mortgage brokers advise: Look, if this guy wants to get into the three hundred plus range, three fifty, three sixty, he's going to have to put twenty percent down. We can qualify him at two ninety, but two ninety is not the type of house he wants. It's what Sierra did and Wilbur did, which is wise. They said, "Look, what do you want? Let us work out a solution." This gentleman wanted to live in a particular area, and the properties were in that range. And that's why they're working the deal this way, which is exactly what you do. You, you, you find a, a solution to their problem. He can't get that house. Uh, he wants to live in this area. Um, we're going to help him get qualified for this property in four years. Right? This is exactly what you do. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? So, so in this case... Okay, so good. So in this case, what's causing this? What's causing this? Well, less option consideration. Twelve seventy-five is what they're getting extra. Okay, but if we look at the house itself, eighteen hundred dollars is the rent, and the expenses on this house are what? What expenses are are on this house? Well, we have what are the expenses? We have what? We have a Mortgage, yeah, carrying costs, which is mortgage. We got property tax, and we got insurance. What does that add up to? Yeah, he's gonna pay over three k a rent. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, what does that add up to? Good. 1481. Good. Now, 1481 is my expense, and 1800 is what I'm bringing in. All right. What, is, what am I left over? Is this minus this? Seconds. Uh, again. Equals this minus this. There we go. Oh, 1800. Isn't that isn't that funny? Give me one second. Just got to let somebody in. Let's try that again. 
equals G42 minus G43. That's what it's doing there. G43. There we go. $319. So this is a negative. This is uh, that's the expense. That's the income. $319. Okay. So $319 is what we have. Okay. Okay, good. $319. Is anybody, anybody completely lost at this point? Because <laughs> if you are, it's okay. You can ask questions. I want to make sure everybody's up to speed on this point. You're confused. Okay. Okay, so, so, so everybody, everybody just slow down. Slow down. Just focus on, focus on income and expenses. Okay? Lease payment, rent, 1800 Expenses, which is this, uh, first mortgage, property tax, insurance, adds up to 418, uh, 400, sorry, $1,481. Income is uh, 1800 The net cash flow is, let me do this, net cash flow is right there. Okay, so this is income, so gross. Income. Okay, this is gross expenses or expenses. I'm gonna spell expenses. Um, expenses. Okay, so gross income. Expenses. And this is what? Cash flow. Does everybody understand that part? Is anybody confused about that part? No, okay, good. Now look at this. Check this out. If I added maintenance, property management, and vacancy, right, which equals 20%, okay, of gross, 20% of the gross income. That would be equals this times, times decimal two zero. That's another $360. That's a minus. Our, our net cash flow would be what? Minus uh, $41. Everybody see that? So I wanted to point that out because this property, someone might look at this property, let me buy it. I'm bringing in $1,800. It covers my expenses. And you think you're making $319, but you're not. You have maintenance, property management, vacancy you have to account for. That's another $360. That's going to put you at a negative $41. This is why rent to owns are so important. Because they can take a loser and make it a winner. Because when we take away the maintenance, property management, and vacancy, which, which who's responsible for that? Who's responsible for those now? The tenant buyer, that's right. This is, this is a big deal. Yeah, for sure, right? The tenant buyer is going to take care of that. And because of that, you know, our cash flow, right, is now, you know, 318, you know, because, you know, we're able to, you know, avoid this, this thing, but the reality with, 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 uh, the reality with the business that we're in, which is real estate. So, you know, we're making $319. Now, the question becomes, this is this person that's putting up the money. They're an investor, right? Not in this case, actually, they're a partner. So Sierra and Wilbur decided, let's split the profits. They're splitting the profits down the middle. Correct, Sierra? Down the middle. Is that right? 50-50, right? Okay. So what can we do? Well, we can say, look, I'm going to give you half this per month, which is $159.50, right? And I'm going to make $159.50. So we each make $159.50. Okay? Okay. Now, 
Okay, so that's the cash flow at the end of the month. And, and then we have, right, the profit from the deal itself, right? The profit from the deal itself from purchase to sale. So from purchase to sale, how much is the purchase to sale? We have 326,142, right? Minus, sorry, 360 minus 326,142. What's that number? Thirty-three thousand. So the profit from sale. Okay, profit from sale. Okay, equals what? Equals. I'm just gonna put thirty. We equals. This 360, 360 minus the original purchase price that gives us 33. Let's put that over there. 33, uh, 33858. So we can now say, okay, equals this. Split that divided by two uh, equals this. Minus this will be the same thing. That's the money. Then we look at profit. Uh, so we go sum equals equals this. Sorry, this. Oh wait, one second. Let me just move these down. I'm missing something here. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Cash flow. That's right. So let's do this. Control X. Because that's a monthly. So, but this it, over the period would be equals that times 48 months. Okay? And that's going to be the same. Okay? Why did I do 48 months? 48 months is the term of the deal, right? Everybody got that? Okay. So remember, it's 9, right? 159, uh, sorry, 159 times times 48 months. That's the deal. So like this, and I go okay. Equals this plus this 24584, which which you had perfect. So so the total the total on this deal, but would look to be what 24,585 dollars each. Okay, is everyone following? Okay, is anybody, anybody, anybody still confused? If you are, that's okay. All good, okay, good. Okay, so now we're splitting this, right? The question, you know, the question becomes, why is it showing negative at the end of the term? Right, couple things. Why is it showing negative at the end of the term? If that's the profit for each person. We're each gonna make twenty-four thousand. Actually, let me do one more one more calculation, okay? The individual invested how much? How much did the individual invest? They gave us they gave us this eighty-one thousand five hundred and thirty-four, correct? Okay. That's what they gave us. So let's calculate that. If they gave us, the investor gave us this, right? And this is what they get at the end. What is the return on investment? This income divided by investment, 30% over the whole term. Everybody got that? Okay, so they're making 30% of their money over the term of the deal. Okay, so what, when we look at this, does this look like a good deal for someone? Yeah, I can get you 30% in three years, in four years. Does that look like a good deal for someone? 
Yeah, it doesn't look bad at all. I mean, most people are not going to earn anywhere near that. But that's that's the that's the return over the whole period, right? That's not the annualized return. Does anybody know what the annualized return is? Does everybody know what annualized return means? We've said it. It's another word. I don't know if we said it this time. Oh, there you go. Okay, so so explain it. Ryan, explain it. Oh, is that right? That's your average. That's your average. And actually, it's not even it's not even a it's not even the way they calculate an average. But you're you're averaging it, which is great. But that's not the annualized return. What's the compound interest rate of this? Is it six point eight? Did you work it out, Tim? I haven't worked it out. Have you worked it out? Okay, I'm just going to double check. Everybody see what they can find out for the annualized the annualized or compound interest rate. You're saying it's 6.8. So we got one more thing here. So it equals this plus this. That's our total amount, 106.120. And Tim is right. It's 6.8. Uh, 6 it's just a little bit higher than that. Uh, might be 6.7. Let me check. Might be too low. It's actually closer to six point seven. Six point seven percent. Okay? Does everybody see this? Is anybody lost? Okay, so so Zach, you need a compound interest calculator uh, to do this. But what you do is you take this amount and estimate you can estimate right you can reverse it you can you can actually open up a web page so i'll do it for you uh but what we did is we said said what's the compound interest rate right of this of this deal right even though we made 30 percent total right 6.7 is what we're actually paying out compounded over over the four-year period okay doesn't mean it doesn't mean this is not a good deal, right? But the compound interest rate is 6.7. Okay. Now, for an investor, for an investor, this is still a good deal. This is still a good deal. There's nothing wrong with this deal. 30%. And I think you guys averaged it out equals divided by four. Average. Oops. So it's 7.5, let's go. So average is about 8%, let's go like that. 7.5%, the compound interest rate is 6.7%, okay? The, the compound interest rate typically is gonna be lower, why? Because the deal itself, you're taking the amount of money you made and compounding it over there. Now in this case, really, uh, 6.7 uh, interest compounded, I just wanted to see what that number was. It, it doesn't make this a bad deal at all seeing that 6.7 because that's compounded this person though is a partner and they're getting paid out year they're getting paid out uh, uh, monthly and at the end of the deal right Sierra they're, they're getting their money it's not like they're getting the month you're keeping all the money and then paying them at the end of the term uh, she's sharing that money as they go correct Sierra
Chewie, you see the numbers? You get the numbers now? Trying to calculate. Okay. So co compound interest, you can get calculators online. You can get an app that will give you a compound interest. I just was interested to see what the compound interest rate was over the whole period. As an investor, right, if you gave someone your money and they made no payments for the term of the whole term, right, because basically what you're saying to someone is is compound interest, I'm, I'm keeping all the money. So therefore, I'm paying interest on the on the on the new money that you gained every year so that's recalculated every year so if I owe you a hundred dollars and I'm gonna give you you know a compound interest rate of five percent that means in the first year you know by the end of the first year I owe you a hundred and five dollars I'm going to charge you know myself five percent on the hundred and five not the hundred so it's not five thousand a year you know, it's it's because I haven't paid any of it out. Does everybody understand this? If you haven't paid any of the money out and you're keeping all the money, right? The annualized rate becomes important because the person's not getting any income from it. They're not getting any money from it at all. So by us, by us, the interest then is added and then recalculated. Exactly. Okay, that's yeah, that's where the number comes from. So that's why the 6.7 is smaller than the average, right? Because the average is not saying, you know, is not saying that it's not calculating, uh, you know, that interest rate on the new money here. It's just saying, look, how much did we make at the whole amount, which is 30%, you know, if you divide that by four, it is 7.5 interest, uh, you know, average per year. If I was averaging, you know, how much you made per year, 7.5. Um, compound interest rate, again, right, is, is, is each time. I reset it every year. I calculate that interest on that new amount each year. Okay, so if this person, uh, this person is going to make 3% on return, this is a solid investment for a lot of people would, would love to be able to make 30% on their money in four years. Sorry, I keep saying three, but four years. Why, why are we seeing a negative number? Why are we seeing a negative number? Okay, so let me explain why there's a negative number. Uh, the mortgage pay down. Oh yeah, we didn't include the mortgage pay down. Excellent. So the mortgage pay down, and this is important. Good. We got to add that. So the mortgage pay down is how much? How much do we pay it down? How much do we owe? Oops. How much did we owe? So we originally took out a loan of how much? Excellent. Two hundred forty-four thousand six hundred six, and we paid it down to two eighteen three two three. Was that right, Sierra? Okay. So let's do this. Let's add some more. Okay. 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 So we're gonna add some more. So we took. This is where we are so far. Let's move this down, down, and so this is the cash flow. Let me do this. Okay, so we can stay on uh, same place, right? So this here is monthly cash, and this is. Uh, profit from sale. Nope, sorry. That's the uh, total amount, total cash flow. Cash flow. Okay. This is sixteen thousand uh, is from the purchase, right? So from purchase profit uh, from purchase PUR. That's what they, we made from purchase. We split this amount. Split this amount. Okay, we're good. Now, appreciation we've already factored in because that's where we got the 360. We, we collected that from here. Now, mortgage pay down. Pay down. Okay. Would equal what? Would equal 
244 equals 244 because that's the first mortgage so let's do this equals 244 minus uh, the right here okay so what that is okay so there's another 26,374.50 from the mortgage paid out, okay? So the reason I just put it over there is because I want to split it. So equals this divided by 2 equals, equals this minus this will be the same number. Good. So now, right, we have the profit total profit okay, so now we have these we're going to sum these this is all the money so 54,000 54,000 okay let's double check that 13,000 We sum twice, did we? Oh, you're right. <laughs> Look at that. I was like, this is looking a little too good. All right, there we go. <laughs> Let me see, make sure I got it all. So, sub, we gotta sum this amount. Let's see. Okay, equals we'll sum. Whoops. So total pay down. There you go. Everybody got that? Okay, now we're right. Thank you. So each one of them is making $37,772. Everybody see that? And we're just calculating again. Now our return is uh, 4.6. Compound interest rate is obviously going to change. Now the total investor got it 9.9. .9. Excellent, excellent. 9.9. .9. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, everybody got this. Everybody see this? There we go. Total profit $75,544.50. The investor put up $81,000. They're making 46% uh, return on their money. The total amount is $119,307 is what they get back total. The reason I put that is I want to see the actual uh, return. The average is 11.6 and the compound interest rate is 9.9, .9, which means what? If I take 81000 and change and compound it over four years uh, to get me that number, that's 9.9. .9, okay? Are we all good? Good. Okay. So if all this is true, which it is, all this is true. Does anybody else see anything else we missed? Anything else we missed? Everybody's good? Okay, so total profit 7544. Why is it telling us that we're losing 5,000? Because I'll tell you, this sheet is right. There'll be a loss of 75,000 at the end if something in particular is done uh, with this deal. And, and, and I'll explain what it is because we're running out of time. Okay, this is the deal. Okay. The reason is it's showing this five, four, six, seven. Because if we take, let me move this back over here. If we take this 1275 and we split it every single month and don't put it aside, what, what does it mean? Well, it means that we're taking more money 
out of the deal than we have at the end of the deal. See, the 1275, this 1275 is what the individual is paying extra per month. And the option we can, if we want, we can say, well, let's take the 1275 plus the extra 300 bucks that we're making a month, you know, uh, per month, 316, and let's split it between us and the investor. So instead of us getting, I'm going to move that over there, instead of us gaining $319 cash flow per month, how much cash flow are we getting? Because the expenses in this are 1481, we said 319, but that's because the gross income was 18. What if I change that to $3,075? I don't know why that moved. Let's try that again. 3,000, see the 3,075? That's the total non-refundable option consideration plus the 1,800. Does everybody see that? 1,800 is the rent. They give us an extra 1,275, which is right there. It's going to give us 3,075. Now, if I put in here, why are you doing this? There we go. If I do this, if I go 3,075, I know why. If I go 3075, watch what happens. So instead of instead of the cash flow being 360, now it's $1,596. So if I go down here, look what the cash flow is. It's $797 each a month. Total cash flow from the deal, $38,000. $38,000 uh, per, per, per person, right? The investor in us, $38,000. We're, we're this, this mortgage pay down, we're still going to see that mortgage pay down. We're still going to see the profit uh, from the purchase. But our problem is, is that we're taking what? What are we taking? We're taking more money out because we're taking that monthly amount, more money out than the deal itself is going to generate. Right? Does everybody understand that? So let me go back. The deal is going to generate 75000 in total profit. Let me just copy that for a second. Okay. That's, the, that's right there. That's what it is. Okay. So let me just put a color to that. Color. Okay. So now, if I say that's if I only take the 319. But if I take all of it, if I take three thousand seventy-five and I split that with the with the investor, they're going to get seven ninety-seven, and we're going to get seventy, which is excellent. That's awesome. It's seven ninety-seven. The total cash flow is thirty-eight thousand each. Now we're making thirty-eight thousand. Okay. Now this right here, the mortgage pay down, that's going to stay the same, but the profit from purchase, right? We're not making that profit from purchase anymore. Why? Like the profit from purchase is there. It's still there. We're making the profit from purchase. But because the total amount, the total amount, total amount grabbed, right, from this and this, if I add these two together, how much is it? It's too much. Yeah, I got to give the option consideration back. You're absolutely right. I can't say I'm making this money because I owe the guy. How much do I owe the guy? Look how much I owe the guy. I owe this guy 61200 plus 10800 by design. By design. Yeah, 72000 So from this, you know, if I, if I minus, let me bring this down. Right, if I minus 72000 let's go 72000 I got seventy-two thousand. That's the non-refundable option consideration paid back. I go equals this minus this. Right, sixty-four thousand is what I have. Sixty-four thousand is what I have left over. I have to give that guy his money back. Seventy-two thousand, and because of that, I basically taken more money out of the deal than the deal can produce itself.
Actually, it will be even more expensive because you need to get the down payment that was collected during these four years. You mean you mean borrow the money, right, Marina? Yeah, that you could do that. There's there's ways around that, but yeah, there could be a cost. You know, you know that we got to get the money, right? We got to get the money from from that individual, right? So so the seventy two thousand has to be paid back. So we we we're we're taking more money than the, the actual property is is supposed to give us, right? And the property is supposed to give us. We're gonna run into a negative number because we're taking this three seventy five, this three thousand seventy five instead of what the eighteen hundred. That's what's causing the problem here. That's what's causing the negative, the negative number. That's what's what's hurting us. So, so, you know, if you want, we could, we could, if we wanted, we could say, well, we won't take all of it. Let's take, let's take twenty five hundred. If we took twenty five hundred, we'd be okay. Twenty five hundred and split that, and it'd be five hundred each. That would be okay. We'd still be okay. Why? Why would we be okay? Because the person's given us, the person's given us an extra twelve seventy-five. You know, the difference between how much we would have made, right, and the gross income of eighteen hundred is seven hundred. So we're taking seven hundred dollars away from the twelve seventy-five, right? The twelve seventy-five. The individual is going to pay us right here. So if we take five hundred, if we take sorry, if we take, um, is it twenty-five seven hundred from this? That would leave. $575 that we put aside, right? Put aside so at, so we have that money to, to, to give that individual at the end of the term. The other money that we took that we're going to pay them back, it's okay. Uh, we can work around that to give them that money. The question really was, uh, Sierra had was, um, you know, you know, what's the limit of what we can take? After we figured, you know, it was explained, look, the reason this is negative is because we're taking too much money out of the deal. Initially, um, you know, the question becomes, well, how much can we take? Because you want the cash flow, right? You want the cash Because you think about it, look, look at the difference of cash flow, 509 if I each versus 1800 you know, it's $159, right? It's $159. So, so can we can we take can we share some of that non-refundable that the person the extra non-refundable the person is giving? Sure, we can. Sure, we can. We just got to plan for it. We'll make sure the math makes sense and that we're not running negative at the end of the deal, right? That we're not running negative at the end of the deal. The money's yours. It's just a matter of you know when you decide to take it out, right? When you decide to take it out. In this case, we were calculating as though we were taking all of it out as it came in. Okay, any questions? Who's lost? Anybody lost? Good. Nope, good, excellent, good. So Zach, I'll get back to you on that. I just, this came from, this came from the lease option class uh, from Tim. Uh, let me, let me, it shouldn't be a problem. I'll, I'll get everybody this sheet next week, okay? Shouldn't be a problem. I just got to check a couple things. Now, the real question is, Sierra, do you have any questions? Wilbur, do you have any questions? Excellent. And that makes sense, right, Sierra? It makes sense, right? Based on our conversation, now it makes sense. You see why it was negative. Yeah, we're taking more money out than, than there was profit, you know, in the deal. You know? Okay. All right. All right. Uh, there's people that are probably five months, maybe six months ahead. It's maybe three months, two months. It's all over the place. It's really all over the place. How did we decide? So the, the key for everybody is to recover their investment as quickly as possible. A year is a great goal. We want to be able to you know, do our deals right not quickly is the most important thing, okay? You just want to make sure you don't make mistakes. 
And that's why it's important for us to stay as a community and make sure that we take care of each other. And obviously, I'm here to make sure you guys, you know, we don't want to make any mistakes. I want to make sure that, that you guys are safe. And we want, to, we want to ensure that we don't put ourselves in a bad position with that first, you know, one or two deals. This is what we're going to do. We're going to build this, these portfolios for a lifetime. We want to make sure every deal is a good one, right? Uh, Vince, a quick, quick question. Okay, sorry. Uh, how did you decide what you can take out? Aline, uh, I just I just made that number up, but I knew that I could take it out because I know these numbers and understand the numbers, the limits of them. Um, because if I take out the whole amount, so let me show you something real quick. Okay, equals this. We already know that is seventy-three thousand. Sorry, sixty-one thousand. Uh, seventy-two thousand, basically. Seventy-two thousand is the total amount I got to give back. Yes. Okay, so 72000 is the total amount I could come back. I have to give back to the individual because that's extra money I took, right? That's no, that's 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 money I owe this individual because they gave it to me in trust, basically. And it's non refundable. I can keep it if I want, but, you know, we're, we're designing these agreements to give that money back. I can't technically what? I can't technically what? What can I do? You can tell me. Technically, I can't what? What can I do? Well, Danny, you actually could. <laughs> you could use that extra surplus. You could. Um, it means it means I can't exceed. I can't exceed taking out of this deal right after i calculate the profit from the deal after i calculate the pay down after i calculate the actual cash flow from this deal i can't i can't take out more than 72 plus those things out of the deal right i can't take that money out of the deal and and if i take more than the 72000 out of the deal i'm going to owe i'm going to owe Five thousand five hundred forty-six point five times divided by forty-eight months, one hundred thirteen minimum you want to put aside per month. So Tim, what Tim did, which is good, that's good. What Tim did is said, look, what do I owe this guy at the end? How much can I take? What's the maximum I can take? Well, one hundred thirteen dollars, and and I have to double check those calculations. I believe you, Tim. But at the end of the day, it's saying, look, I have to at least leave one hundred thirteen, one hundred fourteen dollars a month. So I don't go into a negative. So I don't go into the negative. Yeah. So so technically, if, if it's one hundred and fourteen dollars, what can I say? Well, from three thousand, I gotta leave at least one hundred and fourteen dollars. So technically, what can I say? I could change this to twenty nine, twenty nine uh, fifty. There you go. Twenty nine fifty. I'm okay. If that calculation is correct, twenty nine fifty, I'm okay. Um, I can I can count as my gross income. The remaining amount uh, from that three seventy five, which is one hundred twenty five dollars, I'm gonna put aside. I'm gonna put aside. This is forty five. Last week was forty four. Okay, so I want to wrap up, but I want to want to talk about uh, another deal, and she made it today, Anna. Okay. So Anna, the deal that Anna has, right? Anna, you're there, right? Anna, you still there? Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. I swore I saw Anna join the group. No? Hmm, maybe she had a cough. Okay. I will I will email Anna back then she was talking about a deal with uh, somebody who uh, it was a really distressed property and need a lot of work and and uh, we were looking at the numbers there so I'll just I'll just uh, I'll just reach out to her directly all right any other questions before we wrap up was it a good session yeah we learned some things thanks thanks Sierra for that uh, 
that uh, opportunity to review that with the group. That's how we learn. Um, it's important for us to, to really look at these deals and all learn from it together. Uh, it'll be something we can review on the on the recording too. Uh, but the, but uh, you know, I love I'd love to be able to continue to analyze deals for you and let everybody see and learn from it. I no problems here. I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy you and Wilbur, are, you know, um, are doing stuff. You're really hustling, Sierra. You should really great, great job, you and Wilbur. Awesome, really awesome what you guys are doing. Uh, you really, you really pushing yourself hard, and that's great, uh, and that's going to pay off for you. Great, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so Sierra, this is the thing. Um, there's people on this call and on that on that uh, Facebook that have money that would look at that deal, and and I think that would be appealing. You know, uh, what did it end up being? It ended up being uh, when we went back 40 something. So if I go, just give me one second, it ended up being, yeah, 46% return. 46% return, which is basically, yeah, 46, yeah, exactly. 46% return is, is, is excellent. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, uh, you know, work with Tim on that. And, and your mentor, and, and they can help you out with that. Um, but that's a great return. I mean, I'll tell you right now, I would be, it would be a little, you know, uh, a good surprise if somebody on this call had been getting that before they, they got into the game. Uh, you know, uh, that's a great return. So, um, keep, keep pushing, keep pushing. All right, does anybody have any questions before we wrap up? Otherwise, type in that you're good. Yes, just type in yes, you're good. Good, good, good. My pleasure, Wayne. My pleasure. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, my pleasure, Zach. You guys are getting smart. You guys are calculating a lot of this stuff on your own. Oh, no worries. No worries. That uh, will be 44. This will be 45. Same session next week. Oh, yeah, same session. Oh, you'll be in the symposium. Awesome. So everybody that's going to the symposium, uh, we're going to try to figure out some kind of dinner with all of us. If you guys want, I'd love to do that. And uh, we just got to figure out the details. So I don't know exactly all the events that are going on, uh, but we'll definitely get together. Yeah, we'll get together. We'll get together, all of us, and, and hang out um, for dinner at least. And, and um Yes. Yeah, you should, Vince. Yeah, for sure. Take advantage. No, really, just just keep using the sheet. Keep using the cash flow sheet. And make sure that you know you're getting familiarized with that. Um, and if you have questions, obviously you know how to reach me. And uh, and most of the stuff I like to push to the Tuesday call so everybody can learn from it. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Keep doing what you're doing.